Now, let's move on to the next topic that is a general adaptation syndrome, also known as GAS model. So this model was given by Hans Seeley. Okay, this question can be asked for one mark. So please be very careful with the spellings over here. So Hans Seeley, he was interested in studying our body's responses to stress. So like we uh, looked earlier, that stress do result into some physiological conditions like heart attacks, asthma, stomach aches, ulcers, etc. So, but Hans Eli wanted to study what all, what exactly happens in our body when a body experiences stress. So it is also known as physiological model of stress. So let's have a quick overview of what the gas model says. So it consists of three stages. As you can see over here, alarm reaction is the first stage. Second stage is stage of resistance and the third stage is stage of exhaustion. So these are the names of the three stage which a person goes when he experiences stress. Now alarm reaction is nothing but body's immediate reaction to stress. So when a person experiences stress, the body actually wakes him up and makes him realize that there is a stressful situation and the body is feeling stressed about it. So it's a body's alarm or a body's warning to that person. Next, if the stress is prolonged for a longer period of time, the person enters into the second stage. That is the stage of resistance. Now in this stage, certain hormonal changes takes place in our body, which fights with those stressors or which releases some hormones. Our body releases some hormones, which helps us to resist the effects of those of that stress. And if the person is not able to cope up over here in the resistance stage, then the person enters into the stage of exhaustion. So in the stage of exhaustion, the body has lost all its resources to cope up with the stress and the person might get ill or get affected by any kind of disorder or the diseases which can result because of the stress he is experiencing, he or she is experiencing. So this is this was just an overview of the GIS model. Now we are going to study each and every stage in detail. So let's begin with the first stage that is the alarm reaction. So is the emergency response of the body. So like I said earlier, your body makes you realize that it is experiencing some kind of stress and the body makes you take a decision whether to fight with that stress or whether to run away from that situations. Now, how does the body do that? It's simple. The, sympath the body activates the sympathetic nervous system. So, and prepares us to cope with the stressors here and now. So thus our body engages into fight or flight situations. Now, no matter whether the person decides to fight with the stress or no matter the person decides to run away from that stress, that is the flight reactions. If the person is perceiving the situation as stressful, the body, the stress will be prolonged and the body will enter into the second stage. That is the resistance stage. So what happens exactly over here is if the stress is prolonged, the resistance state begins. Now certain hormonal responses of the body are important line of defense in resisting the effects of stresses. Like I said earlier, the body releases certain hormones, which helps us to fight with the stressors. Now, in order to understand exactly what are those hormones and how it functions, you need to have a look at this diagram, which I'm showing you next. So the picture which you see over here, okay, the highlighted area is the temporal lobe of our brain. So this area, the temporal lobe is just above our ears. Now it is important to understand the location of all the hormones where it resides so that you can have a so that the concept will be clear in your mind and it is very easy to understand. So we are looking at this temporal region or the temporal lobe of our brain. Now, if you remove this temporal lobe, okay, if you take out this temporal lobe, 
exactly at the middle of our brain there is a area which is known as thalamus so in the next picture you will see now here a temporal lobe is removed and now the area which is highlighted in yellow color over here is the thalamus now what is the job of a thalamus basically all the sensory information which enters from our eyes ears nose skin okay what whichever sensory information enters into our brain it first goes through the thalamus so a thalamus is like a junction for each and every sensory inputs and then the thalamus directs the information to their respective areas so information coming from the eye will go to the thalamus for example and then the thalamus will send that information to the occipital lobe which is behind over here okay same way information coming from the ear will go to thalamus first and then thalamus will send it to the temporal lobe where auditory perception happens like this so this is just a basic information about thalamus but the two main region which we are considering over here is the region which lies below thalamus so below thalamus over here in this region okay there lies a small thalamus which is known as hypothalamus hypo means small okay and just below the hypothalamus there lies again a very small region which is known as pituitary glands so in the next picture you will see it over here so see this area over here is a thalamus and the area which is highlighted over here is the hypothalamus and the pituitary glands now in order to understand how the hormonal flow happens in the resistance stage we are taking into consideration these two areas of our brain the hypothalamus and the pituitary glands so this is just another image which shows the locations of those areas thalamus in red color hypothalamus in yellow color and then in the brown color or in the pale yellow color is the pituitary glands okay so let's understand now how things takes place in our brain when we experience stress so adrenocorticotropic hormone which is also known as acth is secreted into the blood stream by certain cells in the pituitary glands so if you see over here in the pituitary glands there lies a hormone which is known as acth adrenocorticotropic hormone now this whenever you experience stress the pituitary gland releases this hormone into the blood stream okay now but the rate of this acth is controlled by another hormone which is known as corticotropin releasing factor now this corticotropin releasing factor which is also known as crf is present in hypothalamus so again moving back over here to the hypothalamus region crf is present over here acth is present over here in the pituitary glands so the crf controls the rate of acth which is secreted by the pituitary glands got it next the crf flows from the hypothalamus to the pituitary glands through a specialized system of blood vessels so there is a specialized blood vessel which connects the hypothalamus and the pituitary glands and the crf flows from this specialized stream of blood vessel from hypothalamus to the pituitaries now moving ahead stressors are able to activate the nerve cells of the hypothalamus so that more corticotropin releasing factor is sent to the pituitary glands thus a secretion of acth into the blood so whenever we are experiencing stress it activates the hypothalamus to that rate to that intense rate so that more crf is sent to the pituitary glands and thus the pituitary gland will send more acth to the blood now acth what happens with this acth it then stimulates the outer layer or the cortex of the adrenal gland now this adrenal gland is present in our kidney now this when this acth from pituitary gland that is from our brain reaches to the kidney over here to the adrenal gland it secretes cortisol 
a very important hormone which helps us in fight with our stressors okay now things seems to be quite confusing over here but let me explain you by showing you a diagrammatic representation of exactly what is happening so that it will be easier for you to understand now pay careful attention so this is a thalamus of our brain this is the pituitary gland of our brain so crf is present in hypothalamus okay i'm sorry this is the hypothalamus so crf is present in the hypothalamus acth is present in the pituitary glands now when a person experiences stress our body starts releasing this acth into the blood stream okay this red arrows are the blood stream blood vessels but the intensity of this acth over here is controlled by crf so the amount of crf flows through the pituitary glands will define the intensity of this acth flowing into these blood streams now what does the hypothalamus do it sends the crf okay here you can see in the red arrow it sends the crf from hypothalamus to the pituitary glands through a specialized blood vessel so the crf flows from hypothalamus to pituitary through a specialized blood vessel and then once it reaches the pituitary the pituitary gland starts secretion of acth and this acth is then travels through the blood vessel to all the cortical areas of our brain now one region where this acth reaches is our kidneys so now when it reaches to the kidney it reaches to the adrenal gland as soon as it reaches to the adrenal gland the outer area of the adrenal gland which is known as the adrenal cortex it gets activated now once this area gets activated this adrenal cortex starts secreting a hormone which helps us in fighting with the stress which is known as cortisol now this after the secretion of cortisol the cortisol enters into the blood stream and it travels in our entire body and this is how our body helps ourselves in coping with the stress or resisting the effects of stress the effects of cortisol can also be increasing in level of heart beat decrease in level of breath feeling sweaty okay muscle tension all these things are the results of the hormone cortisol okay but the resistance stage does not end over here so continuing ahead now maintaining the high levels of cortisol hormones can be harmful as well now why it is considered as harmful because cortisol promotes the formation of glucose which is nothing but blood sugars okay it's a fuel which is needed for nerve and muscle activity now how is glucose produced basically by breaking down of fats and proteins so the food we eat we obtain fats carbohydrates proteins so our body breaks down fats and proteins into its simpler form and obtain glucose glucose is nothing but a energy okay to conduct all the muscle activities so over here cortisol results into high amount of glucose okay now why i said that cortisol is harmful in the short run it is adaptive because body has more fuels so if you are experiencing just a milder stress it is fine but when the stress is prolonged for a longer period of time then it is harmful why because the proteins which is used to make fuels are the same proteins which is used in the manufacturing of new cells and one of the cells are the white blood cells now understand what exactly is happening over here okay so proteins let's understand how glucose is formed first so these are the proteins which is there so proteins once it break down you we get glucose okay this glucose is used as a fuel to fight with the stressors now exactly what is happening over after this 
so the proteins which we are getting okay the same proteins is used to make glucose to fight with the stressors okay the same proteins are getting broken down into glucose to fight with the stressors now why because the amount of cortisol is high this same protein again is also used by the wbcs to protect our body from infection okay the white blood cells so since our body's level of cortisol is high this proteins all these proteins are getting used up by cortisol to make glucose to fight with the stress and nothing is left for the wbcs because all the proteins are used by uh, all the proteins are used by our body to fight with the stress and there is nothing left for the wbcs so hence our body becomes vulnerable to infection hence our body becomes vulnerable to most of the diseases when we are experiencing stress so some of those diseases may be stomach ache ulcers uh, it can affect our immune system as well uh, palpitations and all the all sorts of negative physiological responses which our body is experiencing so it becomes vulnerable and we are more prone to diseases now what happens over here is since we are not since our body is not able to protect ourselves from all these infections because our body is using lot of glucose we enter into the stage 3 which is known as exhaustion so in this exhaustion stage as i said our body's resources in coping with the stress is used up completely okay and due to the action of the cortisol the person may no longer be able to ward off the infection and may become sick and perhaps die yes it can also result into death if it is prolonged or if a physiological symptom is a major one so it can also lead to stomach aches ulcer diabetes skin disorder asthma high blood pressure increase in susceptibility to cancer or a host of the other diseases may occur at this stage or late in the stage of resistance so this is what exactly happens in this stage of resistance and the person enters into the stage of exhaustion where he is more prone to diseases